Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with hosts Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please look us up on your favorite podcast app, subscribe, like, and share so that you never miss an episode. If you'd like to further support us, visit patreon.com slash speaking out and check out the different rewards. You'll find exclusive rewards if you sign up as a patron of the podcast. Thank you for your support and let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast. Uh, thank you to our patrons who make the podcast possible. We love and appreciate you guys. Um, we can never say enough good things about you, and we would love to have more people sign up as patrons. Uh, visit yes. patreon.com yes. slash speaking out. You can look at the different tiers and sign up. I actually just joined somebody's Patreon a couple months ago. Did you? Yeah. And... Um, just for reference, mm -hmm. uh, as you look at the tiers, I think some people might look at the different tiers and think, well, that's, you know, too much or not enough mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Um, but I mean, I'll just throw this out there. I pay $50 a month, um, for the mm -hmm. Patreon that I follow and I do it happily. Um, oh, I, yeah. I feel like you just, get... if nothing else to support his podcast, right. um, right. or not podcast, but, uh, videos that mm -hmm. he puts out, he puts out daily educational videos right. I, i'm happy to support it I and i love too. being a I'm patreon doing one on very motivational um i i love the videos and it's it's just awesome to be part of it that's yeah. all yeah. so yeah we <clears throat> we don't ever do things <clears throat> that um that we wouldn't ourselves do right and i just i love that platform mm -hmm. i really love I patreon i think it's a really cool uh, idea and it's great to get to know people it is and um, it pulls you in you do feel like you're part of a community yeah then. absolutely i'm actually missing right now as we speak um i'm missing a zoom on my uh -oh. patreon uh -oh. because this Jenny. overlaps so okay and yeah. i was like really excited yeah. to go to this zoom yeah. so anyway um sign up for the tiers yes. it's you know as somebody who we would love to have you as a yes, patron right. I, I love the, right. the different benefits and I you know too. different tiers it's pretty yeah. cool so uh, we really really need to talk more about training um and the lack thereof i guess i should say mm -hmm. and and what really sparked this um i've been thinking about this a lot lately um uh, i'm an out-of-the-box thinker and you know i've always been a hands-on i noticed that jimmy <laughs> Well, I've always been yeah. a hands-on person, and I think that's yes. just that's how we were designed to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I've always hated being stuck in a classroom. Right. Lecture is one of the most ineffective ways to to teach people mm -hmm. for practical things. It is, yeah. Um, and yet, that's how we train people when it comes to abuse. And uh, I was kind of reflecting back to a few months ago. Uh, my wife went to she went to a training on active shooter. Uh, on the Alice program and um, the Alice training program. And she absolutely loved it. She said it was the best training that she's ever been to. And, you know, I, I asked her what made it unique and what mm -hmm. made it good. And she said the, the man who did it was just so knowledgeable. And he started off right away by saying the way that we train people in most of our trainings is the exact opposite of that's what scary, we should be doing to save that, lives. That's scary. It really yeah. is when, and, when you hear something like that. And you guys, you know, we're going to kind of use this as, as an analogy um, because there is overlap, you know, with any kind of training mm -hmm. or types of training. Sure. And, you know, when it comes to abuse and right. violence, murder. Oh, protecting. Uh, um, right. Absolutely. It, we're in the business of protecting. So you guys have all heard this before, and, and maybe some of, some of you have been through trainings like this. So for active shooter training... Um, one of the first things they tell you, like the conventional wisdom, is go into lockdown. Right. right? Somebody I've comes had into your similar building. Trainings. Right. Lock all the lock all yes. the rooms. Mm -hmm. Barricade the door. Right. Um, you hunker down. Flip desks right. over. Yep. Et cetera. Et cetera. Absolutely. Um, this man said, lockdowns were always designed to keep threats out of the building, mm -hmm. not to lock them inside of the building. Right. And he said, if you think about Makes that. Sense. Why in the world would you lock somebody with a loaded gun inside and all the kinds of ammunition with, inside right. the building with you? Why would you, you lock right. him in with you? Makes no sense, doesn't it? When you stop and think about it, right? it doesn't. And so he shared statistics and he, shared, he said, when you lock a shooter inside of a building uh, with you, 
the casualties increase exponentially. Which makes sense. Absolutely, it makes sense. Um, and it and makes yet frightening we're still sense. doing and... trainings mm -hmm. where the conventional wisdom is it's going scary. to lockdown yeah, right. when you have a threat coming. You know, that building. training was the same for generations ago for me as a kid because we when Kennedy was shot mm -hmm. we began trainings in our schools mm -hmm. and that's exactly how we were trained to get in the classroom lock the doors get under our desks we were to shelter our heads and shelter that way and we were to stay quiet that's uh, it uh, yeah it's, and, you know when this guy crazy? said if you Years get in the, if you get in the head of a shooter uh, somebody who's deranged enough, first of all, to take to somebody's that, life, right. they're not thinking rationally. They're not like, nope. oh, my goodness, they're innocent and vulnerable right now because That's they're laying down. Uh, I'm no. going to bypass them and not right. shoot them. They're thinking the exact opposite. They're like, There's, oh, my goodness. Yep. Here are all these sitting Wonderful. targets. Wonderful. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And Open they, fire. Absolutely. Yeah. And so statistics mm -hmm. and research shows that when you make yourself a sitting duck – you're going to get shot. You're a target. You're a target. Yeah, Absolutely. A target. Um, yeah. And and that just got me to thinking, uh, well, a couple of things. There's another thing that my wife said, and, and that is that he actually uh, brought a gun. Uh, he had blanks. And he, he told him, he said, as part of the training, I'm going to shoot. Now he said, I'm going to tell you when I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. So he said, you mm -hmm. actually have the upper hand because the shooter comes in. And you don't and, have no idea. Right. You're right, caught off guard. Right, exactly. They're not going to tell you I'm going right. to shoot. Exactly. So she actually took a video of it um, and showed me. And it, it was fascinating. Wow. And the guy was funny. And, you know, he was like right. really good at calming right. people's nerves and um, very good at communicating. I get tensed up just, just thinking about such a situation. Yeah. I but feel. it was so important for them because... She said, even knowing that those were blanks, even knowing that he was going to fire them, even knowing that he was an instructor mm -hmm. and that, that he explained where he was going to shoot, he was going to point up, he was going to shoot, he was going to, you know, he explained everything. She said they still, like, went into this. The tension. Right. Thing. This, oh, this yeah. Well, mode. I am just listening. Listening. I truly am. So, yeah. you know, that that fight or flight or freeze response mm -hmm. it, it's real right. you know it's very real and so he was demonstrating that this really happens like you really go into this freeze mode typically and he said now if you're laying down and you have your your head covered mm -hmm. now you can't see the shooter right oh, yeah so you know it, it it's uh, we go against the conventional wisdom and you think about fires if a fire right. breaks out, do you lock yourself inside the building right. with the fire? It makes no sense. No. And so he was saying, you know, the, the the smart thing to do, the best thing to do, is if somebody gets into your building, you get everybody out. Get as out. many yeah. people out as right. possible. Exactly. Even if he's firing, yeah. you get right. as many people out as possible. Mm -hmm. Because that will be less casualties. Sense. So when you think about that. I got yes. to thinking about this too, and this has always kind of been a pet peeve of mine, is that I feel like uh, I don't feel like I I know that a lot of our conventional wisdom when it comes to abuse training is the exact opposite of what mm -hmm. we ought to be doing. Right. And and not only that, mm -hmm. we don't do interactive trainings. No. Um, now yeah. I've done interactive trainings with people yeah. and I talked about this. I don't remember if it was a regular episode or if it was, um, one of the exclusive for our Patreons, but, uh, I did a training at, uh, at a camp before and I was told I have 30 minutes mm -hmm. lecture time for an eight hour training. I was given 30 minutes of lecture That's time. That's crazy. You were telling me about that, and I couldn't believe that. Yeah. But and what a good training that must have been. And How excellent. It was yeah. one of the most Powerful. effective trainings. Sure. Because it's it's a demonstration showing people like this guy. Now, mm -hmm. of course, I talked while I was doing the training, right. but I was demonstrating that it's so easy for abusers to, to, to worm their way into mm -hmm. a group of people and to just blend in. Uh, to fit in because that's what they do. Right. Uh, they're very deceptive, and they're able to blend in. And you typically, uh, at least the way that we're trained now, you would never pick them out of a crowd. 
And I think it's actually fairly simple to pick them out of a crowd if you get right, the proper if training. You have, right, right. Um, and so you and I were talking about um, the Uvalde, Texas uh, massacre, mm-hmm. the mass shooting at uh, Uvalde, Texas earlier this year. And uh, the, the chief of uh, police right. was fired and should be. likely is going to have charges be, pressed against right. them. And we both just learned about the circumstances behind that because I had never really right. read a good article or seen a good video on that. And his response was absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, it was awful. everything that he could do wrong, he did wrong. The amount of time between his mm-hmm. response and and the calls that he was getting just blows me away. Yeah. Number one. Number two, he just did not go forward with anything. Mm-mm. He was so hesitant with everything that he yeah. did. He didn't treat that like an urgent emergency as it was. Even and with him shooting inside with, the building, right. he didn't treat it. And the multiple, right. As oh, an emergency. exactly. And getting the calls, it was, what, 14 minutes and something that those children and that teacher were locked inside that mm-hmm. room, or inside an unlocked room, excuse me. Yeah. That, he that was he, waiting for a key. He, yeah, he, he, he mistakenly thought that yes. the room was locked, and right. it wasn't. It wasn't. They hadn't they even They found out later it. on that, yeah. It wasn't even locked. He could have just grabbed the handle and, oh. and pulled it open, and... Can he was you, calling for backup to, for somebody to get a master key to open that door. 14 minutes. I can't imagine the torment. But it wasn't just 14 trauma. minutes. It was it was, oh, it was 14 until yeah. Oh, yeah. until they got officers inside, inside of the building. Yeah. And they only let a handful in. Right. And then they all sat kind of huddled, right. twiddling their thumbs, Discussing basically. What to, and waiting on the right. commander. So to speak, and, it, and it really was over call. an hour. It was awful, yeah. Until anybody went inside of that minutes, room. minutes, wasn't it? 74 minutes, something yeah. like that, yeah. And so just it's a horrible, sheer awful nightmare. terror and yeah. neglect yeah. Is, is astounding. Yeah. Just, I, and we shake our heads, and like the one person that was being interviewed said, sure, we can sit at our desk now, and we think back in retrospect, wow. You know, we look at, we really really messed this up yeah really did what i thought was astounding about that too was that there were parents outside Mm, who were willing to go in themselves oh yeah and risk their own lives they they said we need to go in there and get our kids out yeah yeah and they had they had a whole team of officers i mean uh, there was something like a couple hundred police officers outside who kept the parents from going inside right but they weren't going in either Right. right and that's what blows me away that so there were 19 officers 19 inside, inside. Yeah. and the rest were mm-hmm. all outside. Makes no sense. Keeping it? parents from yeah, going inside. Exactly. And and they themselves mm-hmm. weren't going inside. Wow. So, yeah. you know, the whole thing was, uh, uh, there's no question. I mean, it was botched from the very beginning. Um, it was maybe not completely preventable, but a lot of those deaths were preventable. Right. A lot of those deaths yeah. were preventable. Hopefully we're learning something big big from this one incident here about what not to do. I, I the training You would like to, to think so, but you know, know, somebody somebody made a comment about how this was the absolute worst response since yeah. Columbine. Um yeah. yes. you know? Yes. And Columbine was twenty some years yeah. ago. And and we still haven't learned. We and it's not it right. like we don't have it right yet. It's not yeah. like we don't have shootings in this country, right. you know. And right. it it just makes you wonder. And, and and you think, why is there not a standard training where if if you were to walk up to somebody and say, mm-hmm. okay, just a hypothetical, um, a shooter comes inside of your place of work or inside of your place of worship mm-hmm. or inside of wherever. What's your first response? Leave it open ended. You know what they're gonna say? Hide. Go and hide. Lock, Go into lock lockdown. In. I, I know what it is because in my building, which was high security, same thing. And I had an incident where you know we had we had a couple panic buttons mm-hmm. in in our office, and at my desk I had one, and I was to push that panic button, 
and and stay the, put and stay put mm -hmm. and wait for we were had plain a plain clothes officer which was in the building at all times what a joke that was exactly because right. it was a half hour till that officer went outside my window and then he went like this like you like mm -hmm. this and i'm thinking this is insane this is insane yeah i was locked inside with a man who was committing suicide i needed mm -hmm. help and I, it was a half hour and there i was it, it was just well crazy. i mean we saw this in practice at uvalde too um they wow. had a resource officer who um there was a school teacher who called 911 immediately right she saw the car she saw a crash she, she saw this guy get out who right looked right deranged yes yeah she calls 911 immediately mm -hmm. right immediately they the school has a resource officer he's driving and and the shooter is shooting at the school building so he's walking mm -hmm. alongside of it and he's yeah. just shooting at, right. the, at the building from the outside the resource officer pulls up and um he he pulls up on somebody who's outside, and here's the school it's teacher. The, I was gonna say it was the wrong it's person. The wrong it's person. A, it's a, yeah. And he the passed, passed the shooter on the that's way. That's what blew me away. Yeah. So totally passed the shooter. You know, you're looking at this, and and yeah. I know I know it's easy for us to criticize because we weren't there. Right. Um, but the point right. is, we have a major deficit in training. Mm -hmm. We do. In, in every area. And I think especially as it relates to child sexual abuse. Um, if you listen mm -hmm. to our past couple episodes, um, you saw how animated and fired up I was uh, about our churches so stupidly inviting in sexual known, predators, convicted, right. yeah, exactly. registered mm -hmm. sexual predators. Right. We invite them in mm -hmm. and we're like, and think we can keep everybody safe. Think it, it, we, it, it, it's think we stupidity. can watch them. Think, yeah, it's stupidity, it and our training has like got to change. Inviting a shooter in, and I think yeah. you gave that example. If someone walked in, he was a known murderer. Yeah, would we invite that person in? So one of one of the things, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm just kind of talking out loud, so my thoughts aren't completely formulated, but. Um, one of the things that I do in trainings, or I've done in the past with trainings that I've done, is I'll walk inside and I'll do like a facility walkthrough, but during their hours, and I'll show people. You know, I'll ask them mm -hmm. first, how safe do you think the place is? Right. And I had I had one woman, hmm. this is the first time I ever did it. I had one woman, and they were like, you know, trained by Ministry Safe, and they were like, it was a Methodist church, and um, United Methodist Church. And this woman, she was like, I could, I could sniff anybody. She's like, nothing gets past me. And she's like, I'm not bragging mm -hmm. about that. She's like, she just I'm a mama certain, bear. Yeah. I, you know, I'm well trained. Mm -hmm. We had, you know, we were trained by Ministry Safe, and we follow it to a T. And she said, Do you think that you could get past our security? And I said, Give me thirty seconds. And so I showed did, her, yeah. I demonstrated during their worship service. Mm, did you really? Yeah. I said, come follow me. Wow. And I had never been, so mm -hmm. I was blind. I had never been there before. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the layout of that's the building. That's frightening. I that's, didn't know. That's, that's frightening to hear you say that. And and I just walked through. It is. Like I owned the place and, you know, and, and I just, I, I'll never forget. There was a door. We went down a hallway and we're passing little kids that are by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, because right. at church, your guard is right. down. Exactly. Kids are going to the bathroom. They're mm -hmm. going, you know, we have this whole thing. Keep sex offenders out of out of the mm -hmm. um, uh, the children's wing. And I'm like, if you're going to allow them to go anywhere, it should be the children's wing. Right. That's the safest place yes. to allow an abuser to go. Oh, wow. Because they're their structure. Mm -hmm. There right. you have kids inside a classroom. Mm -hmm. You have not teachers, around usually two themselves. teachers inside. Right. right. Yeah. They're not wandering right. around the building. Right. It's in the worship service. Oh, yeah. Where it, They're it, in and out. In, yeah, downstairs. It's so upstairs. dangerous. Oh, yeah. And, right. And I'm telling you, it's so easy to, to train people and to walk through and just think like an abuser and just be like, hey, there's a kid. And you know, I just think we're naive. Yeah, Jimmy, I think we overall... As, as humans, 
because our minds don't think like an abuser, mm -hmm. we don't think in lines like that, that that will ever happen. We just think it's more of a one in 10 million chance yep. that something like but that it's happens. Not. And it's not. It's so incredibly common. Right. And, and yet our focus... Sadly, our focus is in the, in the church now is on active shooters. Well, and churches want to get training on that. Right. And when you look at the statistics, the safest place, if there's mm -hmm. going to be a mass shooting, right. the safest yeah. place you can be statistically is, is inside in a, a church yeah, building. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to say and, that we don't have mass right. shootings. Of and course we do. We do. And we need but, to be prepared. But statistically. Right. You are safest inside a church. You are least likely to ever have a mass shooting take place in a church. What, what are we told about abuse? The churches and schools are an abuser's playground. Absolutely. We know for a fact. They drool over being in places that That's like the that. least that's safe place right. for kids to be, right. is in the church mm -hmm. and in the school. Right. And but, yet our training sucks. It's absolutely it's terrible. Yeah. Um, and, and And we do things like, well mandated reporter training here in pennsylvania mm -hmm. you know in our training i've been through it multiple times it, it, it's all lecture it's all online it's a click right. through it's a mindless click through I've done, yeah I've done, and then at the end the yeah. the message is well if you see something say something right yeah uh, okay well right. what about prevention mm -hmm. what about actually preventing abuse what about stopping people from coming inside of the building, like at Uvalde, where right. he literally walked right mm -hmm. into a, an open door that was supposed to be locked, right. and for whatever and that's reason, another that wasn't. Thing, right. He walked right in. <clears throat> that's another thing that blew me away, and I think there's a big question on that. Why wasn't the door locked? Right. Why, why didn't it lock when it was supposed yeah. to? In fact, I think they named the security system that they were using, and it was a faulty mess, I mm -hmm. guess. That door did not lock. But they should have known that. They should, yes. They should have known you're, that. You're doggone right they should have. I mean, those are the kinds of things that right. that's not like a little whoopsie. No, that's a big And And so the other thing, thing, you know, we talked about this too when we were talking about, um, uh, you know, again, I don't remember if it was a regular podcast or, or a, a, an exclusive, but uh, when I do these trainings at schools and churches, I'll walk around and I'll be like, do you have any side doors? And same thing. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we have side doors, yeah. but they're supposed to be locked. I'm like, but, supposed oh, to be is, yeah. that's the key word. Walk with me. 95% mm -hmm. of yeah, the time, yeah. I can find side access doors. Yeah. I've done that, that are before when I'm late going into like a program or something. Yeah. And the main door, you, you for whatever purpose, I didn't want to disturb the auditorium. So you, you find a side door and yeah, nobody's and there. Walk in, you right, walk in you know, completely unhindered. And wander all through the building, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I talk about, you it, know, not just people getting in right. um, and molesting kids or whatever, but what about kids getting out? Right. You know what I think it is too, Jimmy? I think people, because you can see a shooter, you can hear a shooter. They carry the weapon. It's very physical with... An abuser is often very quick, the action. Mm -hmm. A child is most likely silent. It's also a psychological, if there's, you know, other kinds of abuse going on, um, there's a lot of psychology involved in it. And it's almost... And there's a denial factor. There's People very don't believe much that it actually very happens. Very much a denial to both the person being abused and to those being told about mm -hmm. it because it's it's quick. It catches mm -hmm. you so off guard. You're not prepared in any way. And you wonder, did that really happen that way? Mm -hmm. Did did that happen? Imagine a child, what goes on in their minds. Right. They, they have a tough time anyway telling fact from fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, kids are known to be little storytellers. Yeah. So in their little minds... Did that man really do that to me? Or, you know, I've spoken to so many adults who say that. I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if that was supposed to, if that was bad or, or what. 
I, but that's, you know, the biggest thing is that's a lack of training. It's it that is. people are not trained. Yeah. And you can't get that in a lecture. No. You can't, you, oh, my goodness. You can't no. tell people, oh, no. well, here are the signs of an abuser. Mm, then somebody's no. like, oh, yeah. I got it now. No. You know, I, I've i mm -hmm. got this figured out. It no. doesn't work that way. We need and we a need lot of work. So a much better training. Work. Yes. And it has to be hands-on training. And that's the one thing that I, I discovered when I was going around. I mean, I found myself kind of smacking my head up against the wall, getting so frustrated mm -hmm. because I was like, I'm telling these people till I'm blue in the face that oh, abuse yeah. in plain sight is far more, mm -hmm. far more common than, than what statistics record that it, it, almost every abuser does it at some point. Um, though abuse their victims purposely, intentionally mm -hmm. in front of other people. Well, sure. Um, because of that the it's, thrill. You've talked about right. that many, the, many, many times before. That it's so easy to do and to get away mm -hmm. with. And that that's the one thing that we need to focus on because that's the one thing, like the abuse that happens in isolation, we're never going to see that. Right. We're not exactly. in those private right. rooms. And abuse certainly does happen mm -hmm. in isolation, but we're not there. We don't see it. We right. don't have the ability to see things right. that happen in isolation. Mm -hmm. And so we need to put our eggs into the basket of, of what we can see, what mm -hmm. is tangible, right. what we know is happening around us. And I had people, they would they would look at me or argue with me and be like, but we have a safe place here. We have a safe environment. And so I would walk away from those mm -hmm. trainings feeling so deflated and so discouraged mm -hmm. and, and you know agitated and all that. And so I just started putting myself in the shoes of those people and thinking, well, we had a life-altering experience right. with our family. We did. Um, we saw it up close and personal. You know, we went through this horrific experience. For the people who didn't, they were where we were prior to mm -hmm. right. going through that experience. Right. And so we probably mm -hmm. would have said, yeah, but we have a safe place here. I, or I, I have a keen eye. Actually, I think we probably would have. Because look what we had going on mm -hmm. in our home, mm -hmm. and we were totally oblivious to That's it. That's right, totally, and it was happening right totally in front oblivious of our eyes repeatedly. Yes. Yeah, and I think that's why maybe we are keener. We have a keener awareness right now because we've walked through the fire before. Mm -hmm. And we know more what to look for. We know how abusers work. And it takes time to study, time, effort um, to really think yeah. like that. It truly does. But what I started doing is, you know, I, I was like, well, we have to get to a point where seeing is believing. And so that's when I started developing mm -hmm. this, you know, this walkthrough, facility right. walkthrough. Yeah. And I would get a team of people to, to walk around and I would just, t I would tell them, you know, give me a list of things that make a place safe. Mm -hmm. Inevitably at the top of the list is always, well, windows and the doors. And, and I come back and yeah. I'm like, I'm not arguing against windows mm -hmm. and the doors. I think every door should have a window, but that doesn't make you any right. safer than having no. a solid door. Right. And mm -hmm. they would like, look at me like, what do you mean? And I'd say, mm -hmm. all right, watch follow me. And I would, yeah. I would walk in and I would get a, mm -hmm. an adult volunteer, somebody who was walking around with me. And I was like, all right, just pretend that you're a kid wandering the hall. And I was like, come here a second. Well, of course mm -hmm. a kid is nine and a half times out of 10. Right. They're going to follow you sure. without any coercion. Especially and in a church or school setting. That's right. Where and kids are told that's a safe place. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So I would, walk into the room with the group right on my heels. They watched me mm. walk into the room and I would say, all right, now you guys use the window. And within a second, mm -hmm. I would disappear. And again, and not knowing the building right, layout, right. not knowing, never been in, in the building or in that room before. And I would disappear completely out of sight every single mm -hmm. time. And they were like, what happened? Stunned. Yeah, exactly. Because that mm -hmm. that field of vision it's only narrow. gives you less yeah. than, less than forty five exactly. degree angle. Yeah, exactly. With that little window, yeah. it's so easy to get out of out of sight of that window. And abusers know this. They've but studied have, it. That's They've right. But we have it, it in our mind. We're right. like, oh, well, there's a window on the door. Nobody mm -hmm. would nobody would try anything because yeah. anybody can look in and see. No, they can't. I'm telling you, in practice, they it can't. It just makes me 
kind of nauseous to think of all the many places where abusers have open game. Um, yeah, we it's were, everywhere. We were out for that picnic a couple Saturdays ago, and the restroom dressing rooms there, I didn't even go in. I didn't want to use them, but tell me if that's not open game for abusers mm -hmm. in there. Oh, People yeah. changing swimsuits, your little kids, yep. parents sending kids in. You go, yep. I'll wait outside for you. You know, I'll be right here by the door. I, I keep thinking, man, that, that's a dangerous mm -hmm. place. Very, very dangerous place yep. for children. Um, public rest stops. How many stories have we been told of people being at abused especially boys mm -hmm. you know in public rest at public rest stops there are so many places where we need to be acutely aware and trained mm -hmm. how do you respond what do you do how do you keep these kids safe yeah and 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 to well, treat these as emergency situations yes not as a well well, Chances if we see something, are, you know, if something yeah. happens that's reportable, right. well, we'll yeah. pick up the phone and we'll call 911 and mm -hmm. we'll report it. No, it, I mean, you're not preventing abuse at all and, when right, you do that. Right. Not a, not right. even in the least bit. And then we may have others say, well, do, it, if it's a one-time quick thing, if a child is touched in a wrong way or whatever, does that really cause a child harm? Talk to a child that it's happened that's to. That's right. Talk to a child that that's happened to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So does. we really, I mean, we'll spend a couple episodes talking about this because mm -hmm. we're just kind of introducing the idea. But, you know, our, our training, I'm telling you, is absolutely frightening. And it is. Even people and... who think that they're well trained, I'm right. telling you, we're not well trained. I'd like you to share in our next episode some of the things that you shared and it was way back in our beginning episodes of the podcast when you did a walkthrough of the um, child care facility where your mm -hmm. wife works. Mm -hmm. And I remember you talking about the restroom incident mm -hmm. and things like that. I think you need to go over that again, yeah. how easy it would be for anyone to enter those places, abuse a child, and leave totally unnoticed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Totally yeah. I mean, unnoticed. Yeah. Dad wrote about it in right. letters that he right. would walk I in think, and right. he would abuse random kids. Right. You know? And that's another thing we, we just I think in our in our sane minds, we don't think like an abuser at all because we can't. Right. And so we it's very difficult for us to think, well, would that really happen? Yeah, it would, it does and happen. it does. Yeah, all it the time. It would, and it does. So yeah. until we get to that point of belief, we're not going to change our our uh, training either. Right. Don't you think that's true? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, I I would echo what uh, what the trainer um, who did this training for my wife said, and that's that our training is all wrong. I mean, we're doing the exact yeah. opposite of what we ought to be doing. Um, and then we sit back and we're like, well, we're doing, we're doing a good job of keeping this place safe. We're really not. I'm telling you, statistics show otherwise. Uh, right. It is terrifying how easy it is. Hopefully next time abusers. together we can actually give um, insight as to what a good hands-on training yeah. would consist of. Yeah, absolutely. What that would be like. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave you guys on the hook for, uh, for next yeah. week. So. Uh, make sure you tune back in, and we will be offering advice for uh, for what you actually do because uh, we need it. It's yes. there's a lot we need to be doing yes. different. Trust me. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for tuning into this episode, and we'll catch you next week. Thanks again for listening to today's episode. A special thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. Please help us get the word out by searching for the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast in your favorite podcast app. Be sure to hit subscribe and rate the show. Please consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the rewards our patrons receive. <laughs>